In part 1 of the power balance video, we established the power balance concept and described where it is uh, applicable and where we need to be careful in applying the uh, power balance uh, uh, principle. Okay, then to illustrate the application of power balance at various stages in the power converter, so let's consider this um, basic step down converter. Um, so I know that we have not yet analyzed this converter in, in detail. Um, so let me just give you that the waveform of this inductor current is uh, is as shown here. So this I int, which is the current flowing here, same as the inductor current. And uh, everything else can actually be uh, easily understood even um, before having analyzed this converter in detail. So the input voltage, so all of these three quantities at the left, they correspond to what happens at the input port. So essentially they are the voltage, current and the power waveforms. Then the plots in the middle, they correspond to this intermediate port, again voltage, current and the power. And the final three are the um, voltage, current and power at the output, at the load end. Okay. So on the input side, input voltage is a DC voltage source, so it's a constant DC value. And there is a current from the input source only when the top switch is on. So that is this duration here. And when that is conducting, the current that is drawn, that is flowing through this switch and therefore drawn from the input source is same as the inductor current. Okay, that value, that waveform is here. So it is just this portion, which is input current during that switch on interval. And when the switch is turned off and we will turn on the bottom switch, but then there is no current drawn from the input source. So the IN is zero during that period. The Power Pn instantaneously is the instantaneous product of Vn and In and that is shown in this waveform and obviously during the off interval there is no power because there is no current even though there is input voltage. And we can take the average of this waveform and that would be our Pn bar. Now let's go to the final output stage first. So the output voltage is uh, by control, it is regulated, it is a constant DC. Uh, there will be a very small switching frequency uh, ripple but we are going to neglect that in practical converters that is negligibly small so we're going to completely neglect that um, the output current is um, again if you consider simple simple restive load uh, it is also a perfect dc just v over divided by the value of the resistance and the power is the product of these two instantaneous quantities and that is uh, happens to be a constant because both vo and io are constant so P over bar or P over instantaneous is this um, straight line. Coming to the intermediate uh, port, the uh, V intermediate, that is the switching waveform. It is equal to the input voltage Vn when the top switch is on, and it is equal to zero when the top switch is turned off and the bottom switch is turned on, so that is this period. The current going out of this port is same as the inductor current, so that is this um, piecewise linear current waveform and the intermediate stage power is again the instantaneous product of B intermediate and I intermediate and that is shown here. Okay, so during the on interval you have power which is this B in times I L and during the off interval uh, even though there is inductive current the port voltage is zero so the power is zero. Then we can do the we can do the average of this waveform to get P intermediate average to be this dotted green line. So the main point is, uh, if you look at each of these three sets of waveforms, this P, P in bar, P intermediate bar, and P O bar, they are exactly the same, and that is the power balance concept. Okay? Um, you can also notice from the sets of waveform that the instantaneous power is not the same in each of these three stages. Okay? So the instantaneous power is the same in both P in and P intermediate, but it is very different in the PO. There is no uh, pulsation in the output power, whereas both the input as well as this intermediate power, they are pulsating. Okay, so again, if you focus only on the, um, the input stage and this intermediate stage, you can see that there is no difference even in the instantaneous power. And that is um, expected because there are no storage elements between the input stage and this intermediate stage. The storage element only comes after the intermediate stage, so therefore there is no change in this power. Okay? But obviously the output power is very different instantaneously. So let's look at a little bit more in detail and see exactly where this uh, difference 
in power goes right the the pn has a very large much larger power during the on interval compared to the output power and during the off interval there is no power at all from the input stage whereas the output power is um, same value as um, the power during the on interval okay. so what really happens is we are drawing a larger power than the output power during the on interval and the balance is uh, goes to increase the stored energy in the inductor and the capacitor okay. so you can see that the inductor current is rising during the on interval therefore its energy in is increasing that increase in energy is because of the um, extra power drawn from the input okay. and during this off interval there is no input power um, and you can see the inductor current is falling therefore the energy stored in the inductor is reducing and that energy goes to support the output power um, there's also a part of the energy from the capacitor uh, but together the energy in the inductor and the capacitor goes to support the output power when there is no power drawn from the input during this off interval okay next uh, let's do a few examples um, the first one is um, so we're given this um, circuit where much of the circuit elements are inside this um, box called the valid network and we are given the input voltage we are also given the duty ratio of this switch and then the output stage okay. so we don't know what is inside this valid network block and we are also given the current drawn from this input source um, uh, IN okay. um, and the question is um, to calculate the output voltage and um, um, importantly it is also given that what is inside this valid network block um, it does not have any sources or any loads and there are no losses yes. and that is very important to do this power balance analysis we don't know when the diode conducts and we don't know what when it conducts what is the actual current through the diode we don't we do not know what this voltage let's call this as vx we do not know vx so how do we solve this we can um, um, use the 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 concept that the input power equals the output power we can calculate the input power because uh, we know the input voltage and we know this instantaneous current so let's so the approach we're going, we're going to use is to write this p in average equals p o average so what is p in average that would be um, since one of the voltage or the current the voltage in this case is a constant so it'll be just v in times the i in average i in bar okay. so that is equal to um, v in is 24 volts okay times um, what is i in bar let me calculate i in bar here i in average so that will be simply the average of this waveform so let's just take the um, area of this trapezoid here so that would be um, 6 plus 4 over 2 okay times the um, this this length which is 4 microsecond 4 micro divided by since there is um, only 0 during the rest of the period so this is the only contribution to the area so 4 divided by 10 would be 4 micro divided by the 10 micro um, so this will give you the average in okay, this area divided by the total period is the average current so that is equal to uh, so this will be 5 and this is 0.45 times 0.4 is 2 amperes so that is uh, average input cu input current so the input average input power would be v in times uh, i in bar so 24 times 2 that is 48 watts okay. so now from power balance we know that the average power average output power is also equal to 48 watts okay. and uh, so this is equal to um, since we are given the load resistance the power can also be written as vo squared over r okay therefore vo would be um, this po times r square root of that and uh, the square root of uh, 48 times 5 and um, i believe that comes out to be uh, 15.5 i think okay so that's the final answer um, but let's say we are also asked to calculate the um, the current this diode current and its average value okay so 
also calculate let's say id average how will we do that so that is um, uh, simple because um, this ic average should be zero uh, therefore i will write here so id average equals um, ic average plus the load current io and since ic average in steady state has to be zero ic average is zero that's the current second balance um, uh, principle um, so therefore id average is equal to io and we already established the voltage to be 15.5 so the io would be 15.5 volts divided by the 5 ohms so that is the um, the diode average current okay the reason why i am trying the point I'm trying to get at is um, so we can calculate this ID average um, and if you consider this as a kind of an intermediate port um, can you calculate and call this voltage as Vx okay. so can you calculate what is Vx bar so um, my point is that Vx bar is not equal to the to this PO or PN divided by this Ix bar which is same as the ID bar Okay. and the reason is um, we know that ID is a switching current waveform it's a diode current there is some current when this uh, diode is conducting and when it's not conducting there is no current okay. only its average is this 15.5 um, over 5 um, instantaneously it's a switching waveform okay. similarly Vx can also be most likely it is a switching waveform okay. when the diode is conducting its voltage is Vo when the diode is off we don't know exactly what the voltage is it depends on what is inside this valid network so very likely it is a switching waveform so when we have both the current and the voltage as switching then the um, px or yeah, px is not simply vx average times um, ix average okay. so the answer is we, we can determine this id average which we just now did but we cannot determine vx bar there is not sufficient information to to determine that Okay, so the second problem also is uh, involving the um, application of power balance and uh, we you may have seen this circuit when we um, I think it, we saw this under the old second balance uh, video where we only calculated the uh, VO over VN um, relationship in terms of the duty ratio uh, for the same circuit now we need to calculate the IO over IN relationship again in terms of the same duty ratio. Okay. So here is a network and only an inductor uh, inside this network is brought out and um, um, we are given that the voltage across this inductor VL is uh, has this wave shape and it is given in terms of the input voltage and the output voltage. So we actually use the old second balance principle so which is uh, Vn times D and that's this DTS duration we apply Vn um, minus Vo which is the voltage during the off interval um, and the ratio of the off interval is 1 minus D and that should be equal to 0 by volt second balance and we showed that Vo over Vn just by rearranging the above equation was D over 1 minus D okay. so we derived this already under this uh, volt second balance video okay. now what we want as part of uh, this example is Ivo over In okay. If you look at the network, this is the input port. The Vn is defined with this polarity. In is entering into the network. Um, and this is the output port. Um, Vivo polarity is shown and the Ivo is coming out. Right? So, so now we will use power balance. Okay. Which simply says that um, Pn average equals Pvo average. Pn uh, because uh, Vn is uh, constant DC, it's just Vn times In bar. Okay, and um, In bar we can, um, as shown here, is written as this uppercase In. So that is equal to Vn times In. Okay, this In is nothing but In bar, and that should be equal to Vo times Io, both of which are constant DC. Okay. So our Io over In as required in this problem. by power balance equals V in over V o um, from this equation 
and we already know v in over v which is from here um, v in over v from that equation is 1 minus d over d okay, so that's the final answer for the um, ratio of the currents i over i in is 1 minus d over d okay. so in fact that is um, this is what we normally do in many power converter analysis to find out the input current in terms of the output current it is the same relationship of the v over v in okay. so in general um, in all the converters v over v in is exactly equal to i in over i over.